Today I'm going to review the Night Strangler from 1973. Hey Phil, is that me on your t-shirt? That's you Bones. Do you like it? No. <laughs> This is a sequel to The Night Stalker in 1972 and it did so well The Night Stalker that they made this film just a year later, The Night Strangler in 1973. It was directed by Dan Curtis who was also the producer and written by Richard Matheson. It stars Darren McGavin as Cal Kolchak, Simon Auckland as his long-suffering boss. It also has a cameo by John Carradine. It runs 74 minutes although this is extended on the DVD and Blu-ray to 90 minutes. And this sequel was almost as popular as the first film. It was so popular that they were planning on making a third film, but instead of that they made a TV show that lasted 20 episodes in one season. And that was made in 1974 to 1975. So what I like about this film is the continuity. Darren McGavin's back as Cal Kolchak and his boss's back. And his boss meets him in a, in a bar because he's just lost his job and he hires him again. So there's good continuity with the first film. That was good. The plot's really good. It's about this ripper who's killing all these women because he needs the serum, like some blood from the victim. A special serum that he's using to keep young. So every 21 years he, he's been killing six women. It started from 1898, right up to the present, 1973. <laughs> so Darren McGavin, Kolchak's excellent in this film. He seems to be, even his performance seems to be even better than the previous one. He's really gone into the character. And there's a lot more humour in this film than the previous one. So that was, that was fun. So Kolchak represents a conspiracy theorist. And he also has, like, a hat. And that that's it. Uh, sort of like symbolic really it, it, you could like sort of like represents a tinfoil hat the media see as conspiracy theorists wear so it's like it represents a tinfoil hat and Sylvester McCoy used a, a similar hat as he's a doctor in Doctor Who yeah that bloody Sylvester McCoy needs more than a bloody Kolchak hat to be good in Doctor Who he's almost as bad as Jodie Whittaker in Acton States <laughs> So there's a lot more humour in this film. There's some really funny characters. Cal Colchap meets like this girl who's a dancer in a club. And her uh, girlfriend's this big butch woman who keeps staring at Colchak. <laughs> really funny. What I'd like to ask you was... Uh, she was uh, something less than helpful and I soon departed. Made a bit uneasy by the looks directed at me by her husband, Wilma Crankheimer. And there's lots of weird characters. There's this weird um, old fella, a researcher, who's obsessed with researching. And he's he's like uh, proud of Kolchak because he's researching. So there's all these little characters. Uh, Kolchak's boss is funny as well. It's like almost going through a nervous breakdown because of Kolchak. It's interesting that the villain of the piece is the guy who played Oscar Goldman in The Six Million Dollar Man. So I was surprised when he popped up as the villain right at the end. Uh, Carl Kolchak, a Daily Chronicle. How did you get here? Through the, uh... Hey, that buggers Oscar Goldman out of the bloody six million dollar man. What the hell's he doing in a horror film? He has this underground lair like, uh, location, like the sets and everything, they look really good. And although the film's got a lot of comedy, the, the last act, is quite um, effective, like like more horror. So there's like all these um, bodies, the skeletons that were uh, part of the guy's family. He's taking the same, so he lives almost like forever. You see all these skeletons uh, like on a dining table. That really effective direction as well. It was a good scene that. Hey Phil, I got paid eighty pound to do extra work in that scene. Hey, really? Which one were you, Bones? The one at the front. <laughs> Kolchak also teams up with this uh, girl who, who helps them with the investigation. It's interesting that the, at the end of the film, uh, as they're driving away, Kolchak's uh, driving and these buses on the side, and, and they're talking about what happened, and she pops up in the back seat. 
as, as the drive off for more adventures. So uh, that was quite good that, that there was like a team. It's interesting that they were going to make a third film and it would feature like UFOs, people replicating other people. So uh, it, it would probably be a bit like Invasion of the Body Snatchers if they'd have done a third film. But unfortunately they, they didn't and they made a, like a TV show after this. John Carradine pops up as well in this film. I thought he would have um, a bit more to do with the villain. But he, he, he doesn't. He, it's just kind of like a cameo thing. So uh, it was good to see him though. He's been in lots of good films. Loads of horror films, that guy. I especially like him in House of Dracula. And also uh, his bits in The Howling. He's really good in that. But he's been in loads of films, horror films. The film's not well, it's faults though. It's not quite as good as the first film, even though it's really good. The Las Vegas settings uh, doesn't use that as it did in the first film. This one's set in Seattle. But I do like the humour in this film. It worked really well. And also there is a bit horror towards the end, like the last 20 minutes. That That's quite uh, scary. And Kolchak... The character, like Darren McGavin's, really got into the part. And the film leads nicely into, like, where they were going to do a film, but they didn't, so it leads nicely into the TV show. So out of ten, it's not as good as the first film, but it's still pretty good, so out of ten I'll give it eight. Eight out of ten. And you can go into you like I thought it was a bloody good film. I like both them films. Hey Phil, you should do conspiracy theories on your channel. Hey, that's a good idea, you bones. I'm thinking about doing some. Maybe yeah. the UFOs, the moon landing conspiracy. I might do them too. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. New York. Yeah, that's where we're going. And you're lucky to be going with me. I suppose I should consider myself lucky too. That's right.